Support this podcast via our Patreon and get more writerly goodness. Visit patreon.com slash nanocast to join up. Welcome to NaNoWriMo Every Month. My name is J. Daniel Sawyer. I'm the author of some 20 books, 34 short stories, and numerous articles and other things, and I am your guide on this journey to use NaNoWriMo to level up to professional output levels. Welcome to The Questions, Episode 79. Today, Kane asks... In the beginning of a project, there is such a powerful internal drive that motivates me to sit down in front of the computer and write. This is not sustainable, however, as the energy that I use to fuel my writing sessions seems to be completely tied to the act of creation, developing the characters and stories that will become the final product. Once that phase is over, however, and I've nothing left to develop, the energy is gone. It doesn't sustain me through the entire draft process, I liken it to that of a restaurant developer who finds the perfect, small, dusty warehouse he can transform into the hot new restaurant club in the city. But once it's built and up and running, well, there's no more interest. The day-to-day chore of managing the restaurant is not the same as the fiery energy that is present in developing it and building it. Is there a fix for this? Well, Kane, there is. There are a few. One of them is to stop developing your characters and stories before you write them. What's happening is you've got, implicit in your question, there's a conception of the act of creation that's tied to the idea. You've got a notion that your ideas are precious, rather than that the story is precious, and that's leading you to be precious about your ideas and not to engage in the joy of discovery in the process of telling your story. This is going to sound weird coming from someone like me, because I'm a big idea guy. I love interesting ideas. You might have picked that up from my episode on research, or from any number of the other episodes I've done here, and that's to say nothing of if you've listened to my fiction podcast or my earlier nonfiction podcasts or anything like that. But ideas really are fairly worthless in and of themselves. It's one of the reasons ideas aren't copyrightable. An idea doesn't matter. And ideas, by ideas, I don't just mean a one-line premise. I mean your character sketches. I mean your outlines. None of that, first of all, is copyrightable. And second of all, none of it makes a story. They're just pieces of the story. And they're not all the pieces. Once you've got your character sketches and your outlines done, you still haven't told the story. And there is gobs of creation left to do in the process of writing the story. What's happening is I think you've got a notion in your head that creativity is tied only to a couple of pieces of the process. And that notion is simply untrue. Creativity is present through the whole process and, in fact, only really gets fully engaged when you're in full flower playing with all the different pieces at the same time. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't be creative when you're outlining and you can't be creative when you're developing character sketches ahead of time, but you have so tied yourself to the notion that that's the act of creativity, that's the exciting part, that you have cut yourself off from what is the much, much more satisfying and engaging work of putting things all together and discovering what happens when you put them together. One of the reasons that no story is complete until it's written is because when you are giving your ideas free reign... They produce things by interacting with each other that you could not have predicted from the vantage point of your drafting table when you're doing your pre-planning. If this is something you're really caught up on, if I was you, I would take and try to write a couple of books with no pre-planning. Zero. Sit down, word one, and write utterly into the dark. Do it with short stories if the idea of doing it with a novel is too much. What's happening is you do not trust your process, and so it's boring you, and it's intimidating you. You're running away to the stuff that you feel competent doing, and you're doing that all in a separate building instead of doing it on site with the rest of the things. Now, all that said, there is a secondary thing that's going on. I dealt with this a little bit in the episode The Dreaded One-Third, which was like episode three or four of the entire podcast. There comes a time for most writers, somewhere between 
20% and 40% of the way through a, any story, where the initial excitement begins to fade and it can start to feel like real work. Because basically the novelty has worn off, and we humans are creatures that get excited about novelty. Finding ways to push through that is one of the fundamental head games that you have to master, and that you'll keep fighting through your whole writing life. That Everybody deals with that. If not all the time, then from time to time. One of the ways that you do that is to develop a love for the process, rather than having in your head a love for the planning or for any particular piece of what's going on. Another way to do it is to invoke Chandler's rule, which is that when you're stuck, big guys with guns come through the door, and by the time you figure out what they're doing there, the story is moving again. Another is the rather pedestrian technique that works really well of asking the next question. Every event in your story affects every other piece in play. It affects the characters, it affects the plot, it affects the world that your characters are in and where the plot is taking place. And if you're stuck, asking, then what, actually can really help. Um, it can help for a couple of reasons. Now, I know it's an obvious question, but by turning the process on its head and turning it into an exercise of answering interesting questions... You can make it a game again, and bringing that sense of playfulness back into it is one of the ways that you get over that hump. If you're not getting a satisfactory answer by asking, then what? Like, what's the thing that would happen if these things happen together? You can give it a twist, and I've gotten myself out of a lot of dead ends this way by asking myself, what is the least likely thing that could happen here that's still believable? Or what is the most unexpected thing this character could do that is still in character. And that'll lead to a number of false starts to get unblocked, but eventually I'll find a groove and it'll open up vistas in the story that I hadn't imagined possible. You have to be willing to follow the logic of your story through, even if you're screwing with it all along the way by asking impertinent questions just to keep yourself from being bored. And there's nothing wrong with that, because if you're not bored, chances are the audience isn't going to be bored either. If you can't see where things are going, it's going to take a hell of a canny audience member to figure out where it's going. So, in sum, I would say it sounds like it's time to drop some of the chains that are fettering you. Try different methods of developing your stories. Try different ways of approaching the thing. If you're stalling out at 25% all the time if you want, you're winding up with stacks of half-finished novels, then you're doing something very basic that's wrong. You're getting in your own way, either by not giving yourself enough material to run with, such as starting with one idea and not letting any other ideas pollute it. It's the pollution that creates the story. Or by trying to do all the creative work up front and then viewing the process of the actual writing as a workmanlike draftsman -y task that will also kill you or whatever it is you're doing either in your head or in the actual tangible world start looking for ways you might be getting in your own way and change them mix up the process and any time you feel a strong block against trying a particular method you should run toward that method that block that you're feeling is trying to protect you from making a mistake. It's risk aversion in a very clever, peculiar disguise. But creativity is all about risk, and the more you're listening to the risk-averse voices in your head, the less likely you are to find the creative process that works best for you. So use your sense of hesitation as a sign pointing you to where you should go. And do the most outrageous, scary things you can think of to bust through. And you will find out so much about yourself and your process that will be useful to you for the rest of your life. I can't recommend it highly enough. Thank you for the question. It was a fantastic question. I really hope that helps. And I'll see you tomorrow. NaNoWriMo Every Month is written and presented by J. Daniel Sawyer and produced by Artistic Whispers Productions. Visit our website at NaNoWriMoEveryMonth.com and leave a tip in the tip jar or join the Patreon to support this podcast. 
NaNoWriMo Every Month is copyright 2016 by J. Daniel Sawyer and Artistic Whispers Productions and is released under a Creative Commons non-commercial attribution no derivatives license.